So I just came from seeing the quintessential quintuplets movie. A series that if you know me personally, you know how much I like this show. I mean, look at this weep shit. I mean, my literal channel outro is inspired by the first ending visuals to the show. But I'm not gonna lie. I went into that theater hating like a bitch. Because of the internet, I was already spoiled on who the bride even was. And let me tell you. I was not happy. I hate it here! I had people telling me online to Merc, just read the manga. And I'm telling everyone right now, if I start a series with the anime, I'm finishing that shit in the anime. That's just my style. But I'm not coming on here to be bitter about my favorite girl not winning. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. We'll save that for later. I came on here to talk about this movie that really shouldn't have been a movie. We all know anime fans are quite possibly the worst people to deal with as a collective. Worse than music fans. Worse than video game fans. Shit, I'll say it right now. We are worse than Marvel fans. And I don't even know how that's even possible. But it is. And get your ass out the comments right now. Get, get out. I see you. And really, I can only say this because I'm one of you. You are me. I am you. I love the anime community. But let's be serious. Let's be honest with ourselves. Most of you are starting to feel like that annoying ass sibling you don't want around because you know they'll scare the hoes away. I'm sorry, but as a collective, if we want some respect of being fans of a niche ass genre that's slowly becoming worldwide, globally popular, you at home need to decide which anime fan you want to be. Do you want to be the grown ass man under a Twitter thread arguing about your favorite waifu getting the second place award or are you gonna be like yours truly and cry a little bit about it on your car on the way home i'm not crying over her <laughs> these tears of joy if anything you feel me these tears of joy <laughs> mm, good tears of joy and then shrug it off because you remember oh yeah i can't fuck a drawing i'm sorry to let y'all down boys but 3d woman will always be better than 2d and that's a fact <laughs> and you were looking kind of good. I'm trying to smooch those. Of course, Vito. I would always let you smooch my lips. I don't know what. Okay, girl. Shit. Mwah. Mwah, mwah, mwah. My brother in Christ. You are scaring the hoes. And on that note, let's talk about... I'm not a one good guy. Talk for you. To the normies at home that haven't seen the show before, the quintessential quintuplet is about our main lead, Futado Usagi, finding out what being the luckiest man alive really looks like. Ah! It should have been me, not him! It's not fair! And I'll be honest, if you can't tolerate anime tropes, this show really has all the normal anime cliches in it, but it also has a lot of good character writing to set itself apart from its competition. And it's weird because as a viewer, we all know we clicked on the show on Crunchyroll cause a romance story about something as impossible as five quintuplet sisters actually making it out of the womb in the 21st century is the biggest mystery of the show to me. Yeah. Bigger than those. And Negi Haruba, I really hope I said that right, is a genius for thinking of this premise for a romance show. Quintuplets literally occur naturally in 1 in 55 million births in the country today. So am I the only one who was enticed about the show not because of <laughs> pretty animated girls, but because I have yet to see actual quintuplets in real life. Quintuplets are literally the rarest thing in existence. They're rarer than my chances of ever dating Hatomi Tanaka. Except those odds just got a whole lot higher. You know this whole time I thought she was married? Apparently she's not. <coughs> just, <coughs> just finna, you know. God, I'm so player. <laughs> but yeah, I never started the show because the girls were cute. I started it because twins 
triplets and whatever they call four siblings were always so fascinating to me because I only ever grew up with an older sibling. So the dynamic between the sisters and how each one of the girls get their own in-depth dramas and arcs to deal with as they go through high school and just go through the normal bullshit of, oh, so you mean I can't be a cowboy when I grow up? I have to study and get a j j Nah, I can't even say that shit. I might just throw up. Also, I think it's cool how the offer shows the girls' ages through their, like, convenient-ass accessories. So the viewer is able to tell them apart. Ichika is the oldest, so she wears one earring. Nino has her two butterfly ribbons. Miko wears her headphones with the three-sided triangle on the side. Yotsuba has her twin ribbons. And Itsuki wears her star to represent her spot as the baby in the family. And how the plot of the show really boils down to is that all the girls are basically Hot ass at school. Are you serious? Is she serious? Apparently, they must share all one single brain cell as well. Because look at these scores, Jesus! And the entire reason Futado, the main lead, gets involved with them in the first place is through, you know, coincidence. I mean, we got to make the story happen somehow. Futado's family is dirt poor, which is the reason he takes the job off for the tutor the dumb dumb sisters in the first place. Because their dad gets paid that good good doctor money. I mean, look at their house. Hold up. Cute little sister. No parents around, really. Good student. Kinda awkward. The number one student at the school, grades-wise. Hmm. Yeah, I knew there was a reason I liked them. This man is literally a combination of my two favorite romance protagonists in anime. Like, come on, Neggy. If you were making the story for me, you could have just hit me up, bro. You could have got me in touch with the director of the anime. I could have been the voice actor for Futado. All you had to do was call. And I know the author probably planned for the series to spark an all-out war in its own fandom. Team Chizuru and Team Ruka. Get that shit out of my face. Team Ishka. Team Yotsuba. Team Nino, Team Suki, Team Miku? Oh yeah, that's what I like. But let's keep it a buck. How can you really choose between all of them? I mean, what did J. Cole say? Why would I choose between this one or that one, one or that one, one or that one, one or that one, when I know that I can have all of them? No shit. In every season, the show would glimpse into the future, hyping up the bride that will inevitably marry Futado when the story is all said and done. Which, in my opinion, completely ruins the anticipation, but... I mean, I don't wanna know if he actually chooses one. What if he wanted to be on his boss shit and was like, get into the bride? <laughs> Bitch, please. I'm getting to the study so I can get to the shmoney. I'm not that's right. <laughs> now imagine if that was actually the ending to the series. That would have been such a fun, but we know we all wouldn't want that. But I mean, does it look good? Tell me the truth. Do you think I. Uh... Wear a trash bag for all I care. Just get downstairs. <laughs> And like I said, the show still has the normal slice of life antics that if all you do is watch Dragon Ball Z, you're probably not gonna like the, the camping, camping arc, arc, the Thanksgiving arc, arc <laughs> the festival arc, a fan favorite, the summer vacation arc, and hold on, don't blink, another school festival arc, let's go! That's just spicy! Slice of Life Romance is a tolerance test for anime fans. To test whether or not they're just a casual watcher or a normal watcher or just a straight up addict. If I had to choose, I'd probably put myself right here. So I'm sorry to all the normies. Goku will not be arriving as a special guest in the show. And before I talk about my feelings on the movie itself, I want to talk about the characters. You know, as I do so well. Mostly the girls. Futuro really remains the same throughout the entire story. So I'm going to talk about the characters that actually get the most development. Starting with the sister, I feel that gets the most unnecessary hate. But it is also kind of necessary. Ishika Nakano. She is the oldest of the quintuplets. She's the messiest one, but she also gives off like a cool older sister vibe. And when I say she's messy, I'm not just talking about her dirty ass room. Futaro, the girl from six years back. That girl was one of us, but you figured that out, didn't you? Yeah. It was me. It's true. I was Rena. We met here in Kyoto six years ago. I'm not lying. 
believe me. C A P. Cap. There are clear differences between Ishka in season one and her in season two. <laughs> In season one, you're watching her, you're like, yeah, yeah, she, she's all right, she's kind of cool. She wants to be an actress, that's cool. I want to be an actor, that's cool. But in season two, all I can remember thinking about her is how fucking toxic she was. To her own sisters, no less. What she was doing in season two was the spicy drama I was here for during the sister wars or I mean I'm not gonna lie she was doing some snake ass stuff that I couldn't believe I felt like I was watching Love Island again by the lengths that Ishka would go to to make sure that ring was on her finger by the end of the show yeah it's about what do you mean she's doing her best to get in the way get in the way of what me too hold on quiet <laughs> she won't let you confess to Wasugi I got here first Watch this, Lise. You can actually pinpoint the second when his heart rips in half. And now. You didn't hear that. <sighs> Finally there. <laughs> Miku, what happened? Where are you going? It's you, right? That was way out of line. Do you feel good about making her cry? I mean, even in the movie, after Futaro picks which girl he loves the most, she deadass still contemplates for a second breaking one of her sister's hearts before realizing, Oh yeah, I had character development. That would be bad. Let's not do that. While I was watching the show, I never once thought that she was gonna be the one to ride the Futaro at the end, simply because of how desperate she was. But let's be honest. All the girls had some down badass moments between seasons 1 and 2. And I mean, despite her crimes against sisterhood, I did always like how Ishka was the one to move the plot forward. She's the one that instigate Miku into actually throwing herself at Futaro. She's the reason everyone separates during the fireworks, which causes like four different events to happen. She makes Miku dress up as her, which causes this to happen. Look, if you'll have me, I'd really like to dance with you at the campfire. With me? Why? Uh, well, you know, I, I really like you. Uh, didn't expect that, but Ichika's cute, so she probably gets this all the time. Thanks for that. I'll get back to you later, okay? Bye! I need an answer now! Bitch, abort! Abort mission! He is not big enough to rock this ride. He cannot handle a stallion. She's the one that starts telling Itsuki to trust Futaro, which gave them a better relationship in turn. I mean, she was the one to rent the house, which let Futaro keep tutoring them. She forces her sisters to get jobs to help pay rent, which in turn helped Nico and Miku figure out what they wanted to do for her career. I mean, come on, y'all. She really that bad? I don't know. I mean, shit, she's the one that forced Futaro to stop being a clown and actually think about his feelings for them. Even if it wasn't even gonna be her. She doesn't have the most important role, but in a way, she's always the mover of the plot, almost. And y'all need to chill on her because she's not that bad, honestly. I've seen worse. Nino Nakuno. If you're a new supporter of me, then you should know. I'm a sucker for good character development. A redemption arc? Oh, <laughs> Say less! <laughs> and Nino going from the most annoying, borderline, crazy-ass girl in the show. I mean, she did drug food the road. Twice. But let's not talk about that, that's not important. Because within a couple episodes, she becomes one of the most well-developed characters within the series. And I think everyone can agree, no lie, she has given one of my favorite love confessions in all of anime. There might be a little bias for me because I always like headstrong, determined, braggadocious, and ambitious women. And if it isn't obvious who my favorite quintuplet is by now, and the girl I feel who really deserves to win. Like, come on, bro. She threw you the alley-oop twice. And you clanked that shit. How? 
Ow! <laughs> Wouldn't let that shit happen to me, though. Nino in season two says, Fuck the romance anime tropes. I am catching this W. You're the worst. You know that? Hmm? And you've been like this from the beginning, too. You're the biggest jerk I've ever met. And yet, somehow... <laughs> I love you. But wait! There's more! What did you say? <laughs> I'm not sure what you're referring to. Could you repeat it? It was so windy, I must have missed it. How dare you! What did I do? Never mind! One minute later. What I said was I love you. Uh, huh? Wait, I don't need a response from you. You're such a pain. I'm a girl. And I'll make you see me as one. <laughs> Remember how I said there had to be at least one person on this planet who's stupid enough to fall for you? Well, turns out it's me. Sucks to be you, huh? Oh, that's that good shit! Never before have I seen a girl spin the block on an anime love confession. She was dead ass like, oh word, you didn't hear me the first time? Oh, say less. <laughs> She's an icon. She's a legend, and she is the moment. Now, come on now. Whew, calm down, Merc. You're getting a little too, getting a little too riled up. Let me, let me chill. Let me if we refocus. I almost shed a tear. I was in awe. I was in disbelief. The girl who hated him the most was the first to confess. I gotta clap it up again for that one. It's like cutting her hair gave her a whole Super Saiyan power-up where all forms of trashy rom-com tropes do not affect her. I mean, she's clearly the best choice by far. How did she not win? How did she not win? Oh yeah, she also does this in the movie. What are you doing? ちょっと滑ってしまいまして、もう帰ります。惜しかったわ。ああ、そうするといい。キリキリする。大丈夫だった。おい、やっぱ恋はせめてこそよね。Oh yeah, oh yeah, she the one. Oh yeah. Now if that ain't best girl material, where are your standards really at? Cause I know where mine are. Every time I make a video on romance anime, I feel like I expose the type of woman I'm into. And I find that kind of hilarious. I love being transparent and open with y'all because let's keep it the G real. Confidence is sexy. Period! Miku Nakano, the complete opposite of the actual best girl of the show at the start. And I know she's obviously the cult fan favorite of the series. And I'm not gonna lie, she was my favorite too at one point. Until I realized admiring girls who are just like me for real is not a healthy trait to have. My only thoughts going through the show were, yeah, I need to see this girl develop because being cute, nerdy, shy, and awkward might have impressed teenage Merc, but adult Merc eats bowls of nails for breakfast without any milk so it got me thinking i think we only liked miku because we were projecting the insecurities we have of our own closeted passiveness and shyness which in turn made her so likable in the community i mean listen to me brother really listen to me i know miku's your favorite waifu that's fine but remember your waifu isn't real oh no no this, this can't be. So just find the girl with her personality to cope with it. I felt like Miku was the only one that complimented Futado truly as a romantic partner. The most out of all of the sisters. Even if I personally wouldn't have chose her. His caring and big brother tendencies mesh perfectly with her shyness. That I can understand why it'd be easy to root for her. I mean, it's just too bad that she gives off straight housewife energy. Because besides knowing a lot of like random history stuff, I don't think this girl has any talent whatsoever. I like hairy old men. Who the fuck starts a conversation like that? I 
I just sat down. It's like, yes, yeah, she tries her hardest at her crafts and eventually does pursue cooking as a career, goes to culinary school by the end of the movie and all that. I also love the details on how well Miku's able to impersonate her sisters, even though Ishika is the actor of the family. I feel like shy people recognize shy people traits. And since I was like Miku growing up, I can tell she's only that way because of her shyness. When you grow up shy, you always play the observer. So it's only realistic that she can impersonate her sisters the most because she pays attention to them the most out of all five of them. These are just classic shy people traits that if you know, you know. And by the end of the series, I was actually smiling when I saw how confident she looked and felt post time skip. It's like the voice actors just finally decided to put some bass in her voice. <sighs> Yotsuba Nakuno, The Bride. Now I actually really like Yotsuba. I love my extroverted queens and finding out the deeper underlining reasons to why she always tries to help so many people at once basically putting a burden on herself is all basically due to some deep-rooted insecurities of always feeling like a fuck up i mean she is the first to accept futado as the tutor but you can really make the excuse that airheads are just born nice it's literally coded in their genetic makeup to be so loving and accepting but never really show that love to themselves really she starts off as the only sister to never really show romantic feelings towards Futaro and watching this movie has made me realize just how well Yotsuba was written it's almost like we had blindfolds over our eyes that just got taken off and when you look at the series as a whole you realize that the Genki energetic too nice for her own good quintuplet was actually the one that gave off the most mysterious allure about their true feelings and intentions bra fucking Oh. Ah, I was just yanking your chain. That's what you get for thinking I can't lie. <laughs> Bitch, you better be joking. She clearly has the lowest self-esteem out of all the sisters, which is crazy because Miku exists. But she never gives up on trying to become the best version of herself, even through her flaws, which is an admirable thing to do, honestly. I mean, how did you even get a zero on a test? Did you even write answers? Sidebar, Yotsuba when she laughs, she makes this sound, which means four in Japanese, you know, cause she's the fourth born. It's just weird because during the show, you can hear every single character's inner thoughts, but you never really hear Yotsuba's inner thoughts. So her random acts of romance usually come out of nowhere until you find out, oh, so she's the childhood friend that knew Futuro as a kid before all the other sisters, apparently? Okay. Well, that's cheating. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. How can you even compete at that point? Bookmark this thought, though. I'll get back to it in a second. Itsuki Nakuno, the youngest sister who tries to act like she's the oldest but clearly gives off little sis energy. I like that she tries to act all mature but the literal first episode of the show when Futado commits the literal sin of telling a woman to watch what she eats or she'll the cojones on this man couldn't be me. Her friendship with Futaro always felt like the most genuine and honest to me. You'd think the show would follow the trope of going back to the girl that started it all, you know? It would be ironic if Futaro married the girl he initially talked shit about, berated, and always argued with. But outside of that, Itsuki is literally the quintuplet I have the least to say about. She's the youngest. Yeah, she's naive. I guess she likes hamburgers too. Oh yeah, she also goes through the quickest and laziest fucking character arc imaginable. Let's talk about it. So during the movie, you find out Itsuki is interning at a prep school because she wants to go to college to be a teacher, right? Meanwhile, there's this one scene foreshadowing this bald guy with a beard who is clearly important because of how the characters talk about him. But for me while watching, that scene went by so fast, I barely had time to register it blah 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 they meet at the school and you find out he was the homeroom teacher of their mother hold up he was the homeroom teacher 
of their mother, who was a student at the time. Oh my god. This whole scene was supposed to plant the seeds of giving Itsuki the confidence in her own ambitious individ individ <sighs> individuality. I'm keeping that in. To put into perspective whether she wants to be a teacher for herself or because their mom was one. And that would be a dope character arc for her. But I'm sorry, it was kinda hard to focus on that when you literally introduced their BIOLOGICAL FATHER out of literal thin air. What the fuck you been? Where did this man come from? Where have you been? Where were you when I needed you, nigga? And I think the offer might have been implying that he groomed and impregnated her mom and then did the race before they were born. Okay, okay, so... Where exactly have you been, Mr. Claus? There has been zero mention in the series so far that the Quints even had a biological father. I'm sorry, but is it just me? Or did I just assume that this guy was their father, biologically? And you know what the craziest thing is? This man was gone out of the story faster than he arrived. This man was gone so fast out of the story, it's like the author thought that making the actual biological fathers of the main leads of his show to be a half-assed plot point for a half-assed character arc would actually be a good idea. SPOILER ALERT! IT WAS NOT! And that isn't even my biggest issue with the finale. Oh yeah, we not stopping. Not even Yotsuba being the girl that Futa the Chosen in. I can live with that. You know what I can't live with? Bad pacing. I mean, it was hard enough having to sit through a two-hour movie that already felt like I was watching a regular-ass anime episode on my phone. I truly think that romance anime and rom-com anime in general need to understand the levels of quality you need to reach to be on the big screen. I mean, you will never see a Makoto Shinkai film or a Ghibli film or even just a regular shonen action movie have this many uses of still frames. I am all for better scheduling and time management for the Japanese key animators. But come on y'all, this is just a regular TV episode on a big screen, not a cinematic animated movie. And to be honest, this movie makes me scared for this Love is War film coming out. Because season 3 of Love is War just came out this year and they're already announcing a movie for the next arc? Okay, it's kinda, it's kinda fast. I mean, like, uh, we wouldn't mind if you guys took your time i really just want these romance movies to be something worth going out and paying 12 dollars to sit in the theater for because i love going to the theaters to watch anything cinematic and i have to say this movie is anything but cinematic it's really shown through most of the animation quality and the bad pacing that the film tries to cram so much into its runtime and i said the reasons i was bitter about the finale wasn't because my favorite girl didn't win Psych a lot Yotsuba herself isn't my problem. I'm not mad that Yotsuba won really. I mean, yeah, she's literally brain dead, but you don't really start actually noticing this cool stuff in her character until literally halfway through the show. The quintessential quintuplets manga isn't really that long compared to something like Komi Can't Communicate. Damn, y'all still going? This girl Yotsuba made the biggest deal about not being able to date Futuro because she didn't want to hurt her sister's feelings. She had like one half-assed individual conversation within the film and it wasn't even with all of them And I guess now they're just okay. We just get over it. You made all that fuss for this for for this for no reason I just don't think that's how people's feelings work Especially romantic ones and don't even get me started on the reasoning. He chose Yotsuba in the first place <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he said her cute, positive attitude and how she always keeps moving forward through her own adversities and insecurities inspired him to do the same. Level with me, level with me here. 
can that sentiment not just be applied with every single one of the sisters? He literally just described every single sister. Am I going crazy? Don't they all go through adversities? Don't they all have insecurities? I don't think you fell in love with just her, bro. You fell in love with all of them, clearly. Because your main reason for describing why you love this individual girl is describing what you love about all of the sisters, basically. They all do that. Do they not? They all push through adversity. They all got their own problems going on. This is not a good reason. I'm not satisfied with that. Nino should have won. No, no I'm, I'm not there. there. Imagine developing every character and ignoring one for half of the series. And then giving that said ignored character the biggest W of the series that every other character probably deserved a little more. This show would have been the only series I wouldn't have been mad at if the offer took the cliche harem approach and said fuck it wife them all up just move to somali where polygamy is legal and live happily ever after am i dissatisfied with the movie yes but the show as a whole is still so much fun for me actual well written character arcs for the most part dope character designs for each of the girls and of course some spicy ass drama to keep you engaged it's really too bad that the finale left a whole lot to be desired i honestly don't even feel like i've completely wrapped all my feelings together about how i feel about this finale yeah it's a little bit of a mess but I really can't hate this series. So with that, I'm giving the quintessential quintuplets movie a 6 out of 10 as an ending to one of my favorite rom-coms of all time. But the entire series as a collective, because I've yet to read the manga, I'm giving it a 7.5 out of 10. And you know, maybe somewhere out in the far, far galaxy, the Nino fans live peacefully in another timeline. The quintessential quintuplets. The show where the childhood friend actually wins, but nobody really wanted it. Congratulations! Oh, oh, oh my god. I'm not a one girl.